Hi there, my name is Doug Hills and this is the Manga Studio Guide. Now in this episode, I'm going to break down two new tools in Manga Studio 5, the Saturation Tool and the Stream Tool. Introducing the most recent update, these tools give us the ability to quickly create focus and speed lines respectively. Not only that, these lines are dynamic and adjustable, meaning we'll be able to use the Object Select tool to reshape and tweak these lines as much as we want after they've been drawn. Now what I want to do in this episode is break down how you can work with these tools. First I'm going to go over how to create and then adjust these saturation and streamlines, and then I'll explain all the additional options at our disposal to really tweak the tool settings to our liking. We have a lot to cover here, so let's dive in. The saturation and stream tools are located in the same toolbox as the ruler, direct draw, and frame tools, located about here on the tools palette. The icon here may not be the one you see on your tool set, so if need be, just press U on your keyboard. Now coming up to the subtools palette, you can see the stream and saturation tools here, with each tool having its own set of presets that you can see here. Now creating with these tools is a fairly straightforward process. With the saturation tool, all we need to do is define the general size and shape of the central area. Now depending on the preset you're using, we're either going to draw a shape, generally like an ellipse or a circle, or we'll define a path by placing points along the canvas until we get back to our starting point. And there's our saturation lines with the endpoints adjusting relative to the shape we defined. And as you can see by these presets, the saturation lines can vary in how they look on the canvas. With the stream tool, we're going to define a path that the lines will follow, again by placing points along the canvas. Once the path is set, we're just going to double click the endpoint, or we could press enter on the keyboard, and our stream lines now appear. Now you'll notice that the lines ebb and flow on the canvas depending on the location they sit along the path we created. This is going to be more or less obvious depending on the preset used as line length may be longer than others, but the general idea remains. We define the path and the streamlines abide by it. So we've created the lines on our canvas, but I did say at the beginning of the video that they're not set in stone. We can easily adjust these lines to resize and reshape how they look on the canvas. Now to do that, we're going to switch over to the object select tool. Now if you notice, once I switched over, the path that we defined appears on the screen. So we now know where the path is and how we can adjust it. We can resize and rotate the path using the bounding box, which can also resize the streamlines. So if I go larger, you'll notice the streamlines get bigger. Or we can click and drag each individual point that we placed on the canvas earlier. In addition to that, we have this tool here, which we can use to rotate the streamlines while keeping the path in place. And by clicking and dragging this line here along a 360 degree axis, we can increase and decrease the density of the lines to whatever value we want for the effect that we're trying to get. Moving back to the saturation lines we created, you can see we have similar options to adjusting the streamlines. We have our defined path, in this case it's an ellipse, that we can click and drag our points to randomize the look however we want, and we can resize and rotate. The red line tool here is used to define our focal point for our streamlines. The plus here notes where our focal point is, and right now it's set to a uniform thing, so the lines are generally at, coming in at a uniform length. If I shift this point, you'll notice that the lines shift in length. The lines on this side are fewer and further away, while these lines are longer and touch the focal point. Now adjusting this end of the tool, and we can adjust the positioning of the saturation lines. And again, we can adjust the rotation and size of the red line tool like so and add additional effects to our saturation lines. All right, so that covers the basics of how to create and adjust saturation and streamlines. Now it's time to dive in and go over all the options you have to really tweak your settings. Now we're going to open up the subtool detail window by clicking on the wrench icon here or coming up to the main menu and selecting window, subtool detail. This is because while you can see several options here on the tool properties palette, they may vary depending on the operating system you're using or the preset you're working with. Using the subtool detail window, we can see not only all the options available, but we can then choose which options we want on the tool properties palette by clicking the visibility buttons here. Now I'm only going to focus on the options specific to these tools because I've actually created a video covering the other options in the link below. I suggest checking that video out if you're unfamiliar with the subtool detail window or how to create custom brushes because the information there will work with these tools as well. So now that we have that out of the way, let's break down the saturation tool options. Destination layer lets you choose whether your saturation lines will be created on its own separate layer, the layer we're currently working on, or incorporate onto an existing saturation layer. Check toning and the saturation lines will be created as a tone layer. Check irradiation line ruler for center and any focus line or focus curve rulers you have on the canvas will become the focal point when you create your saturated lines. Check make curve and the red line tool we used earlier gains an additional point that we can use to add a bend or curve to our lines. Fill ground lets us set not only the line color, but we also get an optional fill area as well, you can see right here. We can set the fill area opacity, set the line 
color to the main color, sub color, or user defined color, and the same thing with our fill color main color, sub color, or user defined. Switching to figure, we can set the shape we want to define our focal area to ellipse, which is the default rectangle or polygon. And if we select polygon, we can choose the number of vertices we want to define our path. We can set how round the corners are for our rectangle or polygon figures by percentage or a specific length. And we can lock the figure to a specific height to width ratio, again, either by percentage or by a specific length. Under brush size, we can randomize the line thickness by checking disarray and either clicking one of the preset strengths here or by clicking the triangle here and entering in our own value. Under drawing interval, you can adjust the spacing between lines either by angle or by its specific line distance. And you can randomize that by clicking disarray. You can group lines together in packs of one to 50 add some randomization to it, and set how large a gap there should be between these groupings. And moving to drawing position, we can adjust the length of the lines, randomize the length by adding some disarray, choose whether or not we want the lines to extend beyond the either panel frame or canvas. We can set the reference position for our path to either the inner point, midpoint, or outer point of our saturation lines. And finally, we can create a sawtooth-like pattern to the ends of our lines by checking make reference position jags, setting the number of jags, as well as the height of the jagged pattern. Shifting over to the stream tool, we get several of the same options we saw with the saturation tool. We can set the type of layer the streamline will be placed on, as well as an option to create a tone layer. Make curve, like before, gives us an additional point that we can use to bend our streamlines with the object select tool. Use parallel line ruler works like the user radiation line ruler, in that if there is a parallel line ruler already on your canvas, the streamlines will snap to that parallel line ruler as they're created. And if we didn't want to use the object select tool to rotate the streamlines, we can use it just as easily here using the angle option. Under continuous curve, we can set how we want to create our path, either as a straight line, spline, or a quadratic bezier. And if we choose straight line, we can choose the step of angle, in this case, 45 degrees, and the line that you're drawing will snap to every 45 degrees. And if we check clothesline, the path becomes a shape when we click our endpoint on our beginning point. And as far as I've been able to figure out, how to specify has been grayed out for all of the curve options here, so feel free to ignore that one. Under drawing interval, we can set the spacing between streamlines and add some disarray to it. We can group from 1 to 50 and add some randomization, and we can adjust the gap between groups. And we can set the maximum number of streamlines generated within the path we create, from 1 all the way to 1,000. And finally, under drawing position, we can set the line length and add some disarray to it. Have the lines extend beyond the panel frame or canvas. Set our reference point for our path to either the starting point, middle point, or ending point. And finally, checking gap from reference position lets us define how far above or below our defined path a streamline will be randomly positioned. The higher the value, the further the distance and the more random the pattern will look. So as you can see, you have a lot of options to tweak your stream and saturation lines until they look exactly how you want them. Now even better, if you find that they still didn't come out quite right, you have many of the same options available when you switch over to the object select tool. Its subtool settings has most, if not all, of the same options I covered earlier. So not only can we tweak our settings before we create our lines, we can tweak them afterwards as well. So no matter what, we have control over how these tools will behave. And that gives us the freedom to take these tools and quickly create any kind of focus line, burst line, speed line, or mood lines that we want so we can set the right tone or sense of excitement we want in our comics. So that's going to do it for this video, which was brought to you by Patreon subscribers like the ones you see here. Thank you so much for your help. If you'd like to support the Manga Studio Guide and help me keep these videos free for everyone forever, you can subscribe for as little as a penny per video on Patreon, or you can purchase page templates, rulers, guidebooks, or just throw some money in my tip jar on my Shopify site. Thank you for your support and for watching this episode, and I'll see you next time.